This is Kurt ASMR. I hope you're doing really well today. Really well, really well. So, in today's video, I would like to talk to you about my French language learning journey. I have a picture from my trip to Strasbourg uh, a couple of years ago, right before the, the pandemic. Uh, it was beautiful February. I went for my birthday. And the reason I was inspired to do this uh, video is because recently I have restarted my French language learning. Um, and by that I mean I started having like online lessons a couple of years ago using an app called italki. So I would, um, I would book like an online teacher. I actually have two regular teachers that I, I used. But the last lesson I had was back in summer, and it's winter now here in the UK. And the reason I stopped or had a break was because my life was just absolute chaos. I mean, it is still absolute chaos, but it's maybe less chaos than it was in summer. So I decided uh, to recommence my lessons online because I really enjoy it, and I'm glad that I did. I've had my first three lessons since my gap. And so I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about my French language learning journey. So, um, also just a little note, I've shaved uh, because I get my beard gets really itchy sometimes and then I can't get moisturizer in there so it gets itchier and itchier. So I just hit the reset button and uh, have a shave. Um, so I'm glad about that. I have very dry, sensitive skin. And uh, yeah, so it feels a bit weird, uh, um, but I'm probably going to grow it back soon. I um, also had a breakout here. Uh, it was a tiny little breakout, and then obviously I wouldn't leave it alone, and now it got, it got bigger and redder and angrier, because I don't know how to leave things alone, which is a bad habit. What are you going to do? Anyway, so um, with my French language learning journey, I guess I'll start at the beginning. So when you're at school in the UK, uh, most kids will learn French. They may also learn another language like German or Spanish, but I think French is the main one. And French was one of the only subjects that I really enjoyed and did vaguely well at. Um, so I was always interested in French language and then French cinema. Um, like I, I loved watching the taxi movies, the action movies. And um, when I got to university, I did like an extracurricular language course and the, and the language that I chose was French and it was just it was a very basic beginner level because um, there'd been a big gap between school and me going to university I took like a few years away so I did that and I really enjoyed that in fact when I got to my third year of university I enjoyed studying a language so much that I, I did a beginner's Japanese as well uh, which I also really really enjoyed but I've forgotten most of that. So I've always really enjoyed uh, French on and off in like French cinema, especially I'm a huge film fan and I have quite a few French films in my uh, DVD movie collection. But during the pandemic I started to really think seriously about learning French. Um, you know we were all locked down and I just I was looking for something to do. So uh, yeah and I'd been traveling to France a few times and decided that I think it would be good for me to learn French um, to a much better level. So somebody on Instagram, a language tutor, recommended a, the, a, an app called italki. So I took a chance on uh, a, a random teacher uh, and uh, they were great, they were really good. Um, and I just found it really exciting and inspiring. And so eventually I, I um, found two regular teachers that I really like. My first teacher sadly stopped teaching. I hope it wasn't because of me. I think it's because she went into a different career. But I, I you know, I tried to be nice. So um, I'm hoping she didn't quit because of me. But I have two other tutors who, um, who I've had for the last couple of years and who haven't quit because of me. Um, or, yeah, not, not that I'm aware of anyway. Um, and they're really great. And the irony is that my two regular tutors, they don't actually live in France, even though both of them are French. So one of my tutors lives in Spain, and the 
other tutor lives in Germany, in uh, Berlin. And it's so cool that I have like an international, like two teachers who are so international. It's so, it's so cool. Um, so yeah, it's really exciting. Um, when I started learning French, it was always really exciting and uh, daunting and challenging. Um, and just going through the grammar basics. I have one tutor who's very strict on my grammar, which is exactly what I need. So, um, yeah, so during the pandemic, um, yeah, I learned French and um, oh, I would love to move to France, actually. That would be amazing if I could get a visa and get loads of money in the bank, which is uh, <laughs> which is a whole thing in itself. But um, yeah, um, I love traveling uh, uh, to France and there's so many parts of it that I still haven't been to. But anyway, when things finally opened up and I was able to travel, I was actually invited over to Belgium uh, to do some photography. Because um, one of my hobbies is going to do uh, traveling and doing photography. Uh, like portraits and like fashion shoots with people and uh, I was actually invited over to Belgium uh, which is the, fr the French speaking part of Belgium to do a photo shoot um, this model had a concept in mind and she wanted me to, to do it it was like a sort of Hollywood movie star concept um, and so I went over to do that and even though they spoke really good English um, I challenged myself to, to, do, to speak French and so I used things opening up as an opportunity to travel, to do my photography, um, to be creative and practice my language. And some people, like when I was traveling, so I went to Belgium first, and then I visited a friend in Germany, uh, because they weren't too far away across the border. I don't speak a word of German, but my German friend speaks perfect English, which puts me to shame. But maybe German is the next, the next language I would like to learn. I love Germany as well, that's another place where I would love to visit more often. But after I went to Belgium, Germany, I then went to France, and I went to Lyon for the first time, which was amazing. And I did some more photography there. And some people told me that I spoke really good French. And so I definitely feel like I've improved. I think the thing is, like, um, when, when I'm out there and when when um, I'm talking to my tutors, sometimes uh, we try not to go come out of French. We try to be in French all the time, which is absolutely scary, uh, especially the first few times. But after a while, you just sort of, you just talk and talk. And even if it's wrong, they'll correct you. So I found it a lot easier. But my problem is, oh, excuse me, I think I'm, I I'm going to sneeze. I'm going to sneeze. My problem is grammar. I find it boring. I find it frustrating. I feel like I'm not getting anywhere with grammar. And recently I actually told this to my French tutor. I was like saying, oh, please, have you got any advice? Because my French tutor who lives in Spain speaks English and Spanish. And so they must have been through this journey as well. So um, they must have had language learning challenges. So I just asking them for advice on how do you get through grammar? Like, sometimes I'll go, okay, tonight I'm going to learn some French, but I don't have a goal in mind. And then I end up not knowing whether to learn, like, past tense, uh, future tense, uh, connecting phrases, um, you know, basic conjugations, you know, um, present tense, etre, afoir, going back to basics. So I get overwhelmed, and a lot of the time when I'm overwhelmed, I end up doing nothing, 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 which really frustrates me. So recently I've kind of hit a wall with my learning, um, and I really hope that I can sort of pick things up and uh, find my enthusiasm again, and, and sort of maybe take things, I know that I have to take things like in chunks, so that's what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and sort slow things down and then take things in in chunks um, but it's like where do I start that's the thing you know uh, in terms of what what else I, I do I listen to French podcasts like French language podcasts
podcasts, obviously. I listen to French radio. I love like French pop music. I love people like Angèle, uh, Maître Gims. Uh, Angèle's Belgian, I know that, but she sings in French mainly. Um, yeah, um, R.L. San, Stromae. Uh, yeah, I just, I, I'm just a, become a real Francophile. And I love French cinema as well. Um, recently I watched a film called Stuck Together, uh, of which I think the French name is like We Trou de Humanité, and it's about people in an apartment block stuck together during the pandemic. And it's very good, very funny, but also very moving as well. So, um, yeah, I recommend that. It's on Netflix, certainly it is here in the UK. So, yeah, um, I would love to go back to France, and uh, I'm hoping to go back next year, again, probably for my birthday. So, um, some places I would like to go to, I would love to go back to Paris. I've been there twice, twice. And I would love to go back to, um, to, uh, or to Lyon. I love Lyon. But also I'd love to go to, uh, oh, Strasbourg. This is Strasbourg. She's beautiful. Um, you know, it's in a region called Alsace where they have these beautiful uh, timber-framed houses and it's very pretty. So Strasbourg is another one I'd love to go to, but in terms of places I've never been, I'd love to go to the south of France, like Marseille, Montpellier, uh, even Nice. I've only, like, flown into Nice before, um, but I've never really visited. And I'd, I would love to do photography down there because, like, the south of France, the light looks amazing. And I know that that part of the world has inspired many artists and painters, for example, because of the light. So I would love to capture some of that, maybe do like a sunset photo shoot. That would be amazing. So, yeah. So that's where I'm at with my French language learning. Um, I'm, I'm back learning my lessons online using italki, who, are not, who don't sponsor me. Um, uh, you know, if you want to sponsor me italki, that's fine. But I'm not a language teacher, so they're probably not going to. But yeah, so if you're thinking of learning, learning a language, or you are learning a language, um, that's amazing. Keep it up, however you do it, whatever your learning methods are. And uh, yeah, be brave and, and have a go. If you're going to the country where you're learning the language, have a go. Just go for it. Um, and I'm always amazed by people who, who can speak a second language or, you know, especially you can speak English really well, even if it's not their first language, because I find learning just a second language really difficult, really difficult. So good luck to you. Okay, I'm going to end it there. Um, yeah, hopefully I, I can get a little bit more focused with my with my language learning. I have my uh, Becherel, which is the um, French conjugation book with uh, uh, yeah, um, 12,000 conjugations, you know, past, present, future. It's 